2019 will go down in history as one year when Kenya was embroiled in what was arguably one of the most vicious diplomatic standoffs with the neighboring Somalia of a maritime border dispute, currently a matter before the International Court of Justice. On two occasions, Kenya sought a postponement of the case, which has caught the attention of both local and international partners. Tonight, on our continuing coverage 2019 in review, our political affairs reporter Morimi Mwangi looks at the Somalia-Kenya mind games in the dispute and explains why 2020 promises to be an even more grueling one diplomatically for the two countries. As the globe made the final spin, giving the Horn of Africa its first glance into a new year, the tranquility of the waters within this triangular-shaped space in the Indian Ocean could have easily concealed heavy political undercurrents blowing from a vicious diplomatic row between the hitherto good neighbors, Kenya, and the Federal Republic of Somalia over a maritime border dispute that is already a subject of an acrimonious legal suit before the International Court of Justice. Debate on this standoff now shifting to the alleged vast oil and maritime resources at stake in the dispute. One of the richest hulls of tuna fish on the eastern coast of Africa is found in this area. Uh, there is also the existence of uh, uh, proven deposits of oil and gas, and people are looking for resources everywhere. And uh, they have found uh, Somalia being dysfunctional as it has been, and I hope that they will put the act together. They are easier to manipulate and get uh, better deals. Some of the companies that uh, may be involved uh, very well connected uh, with the powerful people in European capitals, politically powerful people, not just uh, financially, of course they're financially powerful, but also politically powerful people. So it looks as if it's an indirect aggression on Kenya. But tension hit a fever pitch on the 16th of February when Kenya suddenly summoned its ambassador to Somalia, Lucas Tumbo, and ordered his Somalia counterpart in Nairobi back to Mogadishu after it emerged that Somalia might have auctioned part of the oil blocks within the contentious section, a move Kenya presumed to be an attempted incursion to what it believes to be its territory and a potential act of aggression. Somalia protested denying auctioning any blocks outside what it claims to be its territory and affirmed its faith in the ICJ at resolving the dispute. Kenya would hear none of this. Kenya's position about this serious matter is as follows and is immutable, that we will not cede any inch of Kenyan territory to anyone or any government. But like the classic tit for tat, Despite a partial ceasefire that saw the ambassadors resume their duties, Kenya was in May on the receiving end after Somalia protested alleged deportation of its two members of parliament and a cabinet minister at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport for lack of proper papers. The three had come to Nairobi to attend a European Union-sponsored conference on cross-border conflict management, but were refused entry at the JKIA for lack of visas despite having diplomatic passports. Somalia Foreign Affairs Minister then terming the move as one likely to destabilize the long-standing relations between the two nations, as he also revisited another protest against a pre-existing restriction that demands aircrafts from Mogadishu to undergo further security checks in Wajir before proceeding to Nairobi. Yet the clock was first ticking to the September hearing of the ICJ case when Kenya threw Attorney General Kihara Kariuki in a surprise move that caught both the Hague-based judges and Somalia off guard, requested for a postponement of the hearing to reconstitute the Kenyan legal team. A request Somalia protested again even as the judges allowed Kenya a three-month window with the fresh hearing date, then being set for November. But even before that date, Somalia, in another first one in early October, summoned Kenyan ambassador in Mogadishu, Lucas Tumbo, Somalia State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Abdul Qadir Ahmed, then complaining about an aircraft from the Kenyan airspace, which had landed at Kismayu without official permission. Adding this was a violation that Somalia strongly protested and would not accept any encroachment of its air, sea and land borders. 
But in another fight back from Kenya, National Assembly Majority Leader Eden Duale, in a motion co-authored with his minority counterpart John Badi, challenged the Kenyan government to take a more active role defending its territory. <laughs> suggesting among other measures immediate deployment of the Kenya Defence Forces to the contentious maritime space. We have solved conflict with Somalia from time immemorial using both diplomatic and good relationship. But the idea of going to court may not be over well for both nations, Kenya and Somalia. This case has been given to the international arbitration. And if we, we, we seem to be aggressive, they might uh, say that Kenya is, uh, is, is, is interfering or even trying to influence the decision of the, the Maritime Court. Kenya must now step up its uh, diplomatic engagement with uh, strong friends who have got the capacity and the ability to influence the course of things uh, without uh, saying too much about what is in court being a lawyer. We need to look this thing deep not just at Somalia, but who else is involved in fueling this kind of thing, and why. Um, the why is that they just want to keep Kenya out and they want to grab, to be in control of everything in Somalia. If I were President Formacho and President Uhuru Kenyatta, we will withdraw the case from the ICJ, sit down as two good neighbors, go through the issues, compromise, agree and resolve this once and for all. And I'll always allude to the lost opportunities, the missed opportunities that Kenya has had. The final fight back by Kenya was an application for further postponement of the trial, saying the three months initially given were not enough. Insiders say that Kenya was in protest toying with the idea of boycotting the court hearings and instead dispatching its ambassador in the Netherlands at the last minute at least until the Hague-based court wrote yet again, this time placing the hearing dates in June next year. A hearing when a major showdown yet again looms between Kenya and the Federal Republic of Somalia. Now faced with a vicious diplomatic row and the threat of losing maritime resources of immeasurable value, 2020 still presents a tough time for Kenya as the government rejuvenates its diplomatic charm ahead of the June date with the Hague. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News, in Nairobi.